Hello, hello, hello. I'm Vinita Marmon from the Pigeon Letters Design Team. I'm a freelance illustrator and lettering artist and a top teacher on Skillshare. I'm back with yet another tutorial and this time we're going to paint a super fun and playful floral pattern using acrylic gouache paints. This is a beginner friendly tutorial. I'll be breaking everything down into simple steps and giving you lots of pro tips along the way. So gather all your supplies from the list of materials and let's get started. After a couple of trials, I've made a little thumbnail version of the pattern we're going to make so you can see where we're headed as we paint. In general, this is a good idea to test out your design on a smaller piece of paper to see how your colors look next to each other and also on top of each other when it comes to gouache because we'll be layering the colors on top of each other and not all of them will have the same level of opacity. Some colors don't have as good coverage as the others. So if you do a little bit of experimenting to figure out these things, that can help you out. In this case, I've done this bit for you so that you can jump right in. So these are the colors I've decided to go with. I'm keeping the color palette very limited with just three shades of blue and a yellow plus white. So for the background, I'm using this color called aqua blue. The consistency straight out of the tube is not what we want. So I'm going to use my brush to add little bits of water till we get a nice creamy consistency. Okay. So I've already gone ahead and drawn some borders around my sheet of paper. You can also use masking tape if you want instead of drawing the borders. And then with my one inch studio wash brush, I'm just going to go in starting from the top left corner. Okay. I'm just going to define the corner a little bit with the edge of my brush, just like that. Same with this edge. All right. So we have that corner sorted. And now we can just pull the paint inward to do a nice flat wash of color. Okay. So just keep doing that being more careful at the edges and corners and pulling the paint inwards to fill the entire space. All right, so that's it. Now we just need to wait while this dries. And remember, you always want to wash your brushes right after you're done with a particular color. Instead of just leaving it in the water, you want to actually wash it. Okay, so wash it thoroughly, as thoroughly as you can in the water. And then take it out and dab off the water. All right, this is now dry. It took about three to five minutes for this to dry. Okay. Next, we'll go with a white color. And with my size two round brush, I'm taking some water and mixing it into the paint just in small increments at a time. See, this is the kind of consistency we are looking for, which is similar to the consistency of cooking cream or melted ice cream. So let's start painting our flowers. You can start painting these just about anywhere on the page. So I'm going to start somewhere around here. Okay. And I'll start by drawing a small vertical line like that. So this is going to be my central petal. Okay. And then I'll just pull the paint towards the sides at the bottom like this to get sort of a teardrop shape. Okay. And then now on either side of this, we'll just draw similar petals that are in sort of a teardrop shape, but they don't need to be perfect. Even the middle one does not need to be perfect. It's just sort of a guide or an anchor to place the rest of our petals. Then we'll do another one just like that on the side. You can even add some movement by making the shapes a little bit more like this instead of just a perfect teardrop shape. 
These are nice to break the monotony and add some energy to your flowers. And then on top, we're just going to close this, okay? Join all these tips and then do a little semicircle like that or a bulb and fill it in, okay? So here we go, our first flower is done. Now we just need to repeat this till we have flowers all across the page, all right? So we'll not draw right next to this. We'll just offset it a little bit, both vertically and horizontally, cool? So I think I will start my next one, maybe somewhere around here. Again, we start by laying down a vertical line like that and then pull the paint around to make it a teardrop shape. All right, then draw more petals on either side of this teardrop. It's okay if you don't fill the entire shape, you can have little blue bits that are not filled in. These little spaces can add some personality and also bring in a more painterly feel to the flowers. If you prefer to have a more flat graphic look, then you can fill the entire shape in. So I'm doing roughly five petals, but you can do more or less. They don't all have to have five petals. They can have four, they can have six, seven, whatever, right? And then there's the top. And that's it. So just keep going. We'll keep painting more flowers just like that. Maybe somewhere here next, middle line again, making that into a teardrop and adding more petals. I'm loading my brush with paint every now and then, pretty much every time I start a new petal. And we'll keep going. Once the central areas are kind of done, I'm going to do some close to the edges. Our middle petal in this case is very close to the edge. So we'll of course not be drawing the full flower. We'll just imagine the rest of the flower and go for it. And then add the top like usual. Similarly along the bottom edge. So the bottom parts of the petal will not be visible. So we'll just draw the parts that will be in frame and leave out the rest. It just takes a little bit of visualization, but it's actually not hard at all. We need these elements along the edges too, for the pattern to look like a pattern and not just a scene with some flowers, which is why we're doing these bits along the edges. Sometimes you just need the tiniest peak of a flower to just show that there is something there for the sake of continuity. So we have enough flowers now. Let's move on to our next color while this dries, which is ultramarine for our stems and leaves. Okay. So we'll squeeze out some of this into our palette. I'm going to use my size zero liner for the stems. It's got some nice and long bristles and it's really thin, so it's perfect to draw stems. So we'll just wet this brush and use it to water down the paint a little bit. Again, we're going for that nice creamy consistency. Once we have that, we'll gently press down our brush into the paint to make sure these long bristles are evenly loaded with paint. All right. Now I like to paint my lines horizontally like that. It's just more comfortable for me to move my hands this way rather than this way. And I'm going to start adding stems to the flowers in the bottom and move my way up. Okay. So from roughly around the center of the flower, just start a thin line like that and bring it all the way down to the bottom. 
That's it. I know it can seem intimidating that straight lines just seem to flow out of the brush freehand, but really these liner brushes make it a lot easier to do. And it doesn't need to be perfectly straight either. It's okay if some of them go a bit wonky too. It can bring in that whole hand-drawn funky feel. So don't be intimidated, just go for it. And with practice, it will 100% get better. Okay, so I'm just adding straight lines to the bottom of each of our flowers. Now with this one, this flower is in my way, right? So you can either stop there or you can continue down past the flower like this. Totally up to you. For this one, I'm going to bring it till here and stop. Same with this one. I'm going to stop right here. I'm not taking it all the way down. This is why I do the bottom ones first. So we know how far down to bring the top ones. All right, so now we have stems for all our visible flowers. But we have to assume that there are more flowers up here for it to look like a continuous pattern, right? So we're going to draw stems to some imaginary flowers next, okay? So let's assume there's one somewhere here and I'm going to draw a line starting from here and ending right here, okay? Similarly, one over here on this end. Cool, so that looks good. Next, we're gonna draw some very simple oval shaped leaves, just like this, okay? So we'll first place our leaves and then we'll draw little connections from the stems to the leaves, okay? So with the size two round brush again, just draw a very simple freehand oval like that in the spaces between these flowers. Where it overlaps with the flower nearby, I wanna keep the flower in the front, so we'll just paint around that petal. Once the outline is done, we fill the shape in just like that. Let's do another one here, just like that. Actually, I'm gonna take it up to the edge like that. Close it off and fill it in. Again, draw a very simple oval. It does not need to be perfect. It can be a completely wonky oval too. That's totally fine. Now I'll get this one to slightly overlap with this stem and then same process, just fill it in. So just keep going exactly like that. You can change the angles of your leaves. They don't all have to be facing the same direction. You can also get some of the leaves to overlap with each other. These are the little things that make it look more interesting and more unique as opposed to everything just lining up perfectly, right? So add in some such quirks here and there as you go, okay? Now, back to our liner brush, we'll go in and connect our leaves with the stems using very simple short lines just like these. Easy. And once again, you'll see me moving my sheet of paper around as I go. This would be my number one tip when drawing lines to find that angle that gives you the best stability and always adjust the canvas to achieve that angle. Cool, so once that's done, we move on to this yellow color for the little bulbs on the center of our flowers. Mixing in some water to get that consistency we want. We did white on these bulbs too, even though they were gonna be yellow, because yellow in general is notorious for not having great coverage. So if we were to go in with the yellow directly over the blue background, it would just not show up as yellow and be more of a greenish color. Okay, so yeah, just paint over these shapes with the yellow. We already have the shapes, so this is easy. We just need to go over them once more with this yellow color. And there we go. Next, we'll take some of this blue compost paint out and with the same size to round brush, we'll paint one half of each leaf with this. Just to add some dimension and visual interest to the piece by bringing in another color, 
that's still close to the rest of the color palette. So it's not too much contrast, but it defines the leaves better. I'm just very randomly deciding which half of each leaf to paint. There's no formula or rule for this, it's just an intuitive decision as I go. Okay. And finally, we have one last step. So with the same brush and the same color of paint, we'll go in and just place some dots. I absolutely love sprinkling in some dots to pretty much everything I create, because dots make it look more fun, energetic, and a little bit whimsical, which I absolutely love. But don't go too overboard with these, just use them sparingly across the piece, because if it's too much, it might just end up looking tacky. So there we have it, a super fun, super pretty and very simple bright floral pattern with acrylic gouache using a very limited color palette. I hope you gave this a go along with me. Feel free to put your own spin on it in terms of color palette, shapes of the petals and flowers, how everything is laid out. I would absolutely love to see your recreation of this pattern. So if you share it on social media, don't forget to tag both Peggy and me. So until next time, bye-bye and happy creating.